Hello, I'm Derek from Inflatable Stop Authority, and today we are testing out the Retrospec Weekender 2 Plus. Today we're going to be doing some on water tests with this board, and we're going to see the maneuverability, the tracking, the speed, as well as the stability, and paddling it in paddleboard formation and kayak formation, which I currently am in. I'll give you my thoughts as we go through it and we'll go from there. All right, now it is time to stand. So if you're brand new or you're a beginner, what you wanna do, I personally like to put my paddle on the board. Some people advise against that, but I feel like as a beginner, you just feel a lot more stable whenever the paddle is sort of parallel to you as opposed to when it's on the side. So as a beginner, just put it about here. I'd say maybe like about a foot away from your knees. You next want to put a foot down like this and like that and then go up in somewhat of a fluid motion. Not too fast, not too slow. And so now standing on this board, yeah, it feels, it feels pretty stable. Um, not too much side to side. And I kind of felt that I would behave this way because it is a 33, 33 inch wide board. So it's a little bit wider than your average all around. And that nose is also sort of a wider shape as well. So that gives you that extra little bit of stability. Another thing that is helping you stability wise with this paddle board is that there are side fins. I believe they're around five inches. They're slide in. So that, that puts a little bit of extra resistance in the water. So that gives you just that little bit of extra stability when you're standing on the board. That's bouncing on it a little bit. It's a little bit more sturdy than I actually thought. So that's pretty cool. It is made of a fusion material, fusion PVC material, I should say. Now they don't go too much into detail about what that involves. A lot of ISUP manufacturers kind of keep that hush hush or they use their own terminology. But overall, I think if you're a beginner, this would be a good board to at least take your first steps onto the paddle board on. Okay, now we're gonna do some tracking tests. So we're using that house as sort of a target not a target, I'm not crashing into it. Um, and we are gonna see how many strokes aside this paddleboard can do. So this is tracking. Get a little bit of momentum here. Even it out a little bit. Make sure the paddle is good. Yeah, the paddle's pretty good. All right, let's start now. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. Wow. Eight strokes a side is pretty freaking good. I did not expect that. That's really good. Okay. Let's try the other side. Kind of see where we have to adjust, etc. The wind is sort of coming to the side to me, so I feel like there may be seven, but let's try it. There we go. Okay. One. Three. Four, five, six. Okay. So eight one side, six the other. I think we're just gonna round this to about seven. So still seven strokes a side is pretty good. And this is a characteristic that I consistently see with paddle boards that have side fins. They just track. They track a couple strokes better as opposed to just have the center fin. You might have other people telling you otherwise, but I feel like side fins, the ones that are five inches that I should say, not the stupid glued, it, glued on ones. The glued on side fins, if I'm honest, they really don't make much of a difference tracking at all. But overall, seven strokes aside is pretty good reading for a board that of this width and also the shape as well, because it's a bit wider right on the nose. 
So before a bolt comes, we're gonna do some maneuverability tests. So we are gonna do a reverse sweep stroke, which, revol which involves basically a wide stroke around. This is something you can do as soon as you sort of have your footing on the board and it's a good way to just avoid obstacles instantly. So let's get to it. All right. So we're gonna use this house as sort of the marker. One. Two. All right, we'll count that as a 3.2. So that's actually a pretty good rating in itself. Um, pretty solid maneuverability score for a board that does have the five inch side pins. Uh, it's actually one of the better ones. So pretty decent tracking metrics and pretty good maneuverability metrics as well. I'm actually pretty impressed. All right, next, we're gonna do reverse side piles before this boat comes. So let's do it. The house is once again, sort of the target. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, wow. Nine reverse side paddle, very interesting. Again, that is actually one of our better readings if I just think right offhand. It's a really good reading. Now, something I must say is that the wind is playing very nice right now. So there's hardly any anything really affecting the board, unlike maybe some of the other tests I've done with boards, where there is wind, tide, etc. I'm on a lake. So there's not really very much of that, which I'm very thankful for. But nine reverse side paddles is a pretty freaking good score, I must say. All right, now we're gonna put this board a little bit to the test. We're going to paddle a little bit faster, kind of see how this board feels. If I'm honest, I don't have any big expectations or anything. So this speed test is kind of based on feel. Um, let you know exactly how I feel whenever I'm paddling fast on this board. So let's start getting some momentum. <sighs> okay. After doing some of those paddle strokes, yeah. This is definitely not the most hydrodynamic board. I could tell there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of drag right near the nose here when I was looking down. Ooh, just catching my breath here. Um, but once again, like, this definitely, this would be probably on the lower, the slower scales of the boards I've tested so far. Just simply because it's not a very hydrodynamic board and you know what, it's not really supposed to be. So I would, I think this board is a little bit faster in the serene life, but some of the other mid tier all around boards kind of feels like it locks behind it a bit. I think, again, a big part of it is mostly the nose. So not necessarily the paddle board to bring for a sup race, but again, it's not, it's not meant for that. It's just a nice cruising all around board to just kind of explore the lake like I'm doing right now. So one of my initial thoughts while paddling this board in kayak formation is it actually tracks pretty well especially for a wider board. Now, I believe, I'm actually almost certain, a big reason for this is because of the two slide-in side fins that come with it. 
board comes with three fins in total. So a center fin, just about nine inches, it's a dolphin slide-in. And then you have two side slide-in fins. And these really help make a difference in that they don't make the nose wag as much when you're doing each paddle stroke. The board also feels pretty stable to sit on. Like even when I was getting onto it from the dock, the board felt more than stable. I didn't feel like there's any wiggling or I didn't have to counter any movements to avoid myself from eating it into the water. So overall this, from just sitting impressions, um, I think this is a great beginner kayak hybrid board for people to paddle. I mean, even just looking at the board shape, it's a little bit wider at the nose. It's about medium on the tail, but it definitely feels like a lot more of a stable kind of board. So next we'll find an area to track and we'll do some tracking tests. Okay, using the home cabin as sort of a guide, we're gonna see how many strokes aside this board can do. I'm gonna guess in kayak formation to do about four to five. Usually other kayak hybrid boards that don't have the side fins track at about three strokes aside. So let's see what this reading is here. So momentum, okay. One, two, three. Four, okay, call that four. Let's try the other side. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so I'll say about four strokes aside in kayak formation, which is about stro a stroke better than some other kayak hybrids that have the center fin, as I mentioned. Some that come to the top of my mind, the Isle Pioneer and the Bote Easy Rider, 10.6. Okay, next let's do some maneuverability tests in kayak formation. So we'll just do sort of like reverse side strokes and see how many for a 360. So let's get a little bit centered and let's do it. One, two, three, Four, five. So we'll call that about five strokes. Just, just over five. Let's just say maybe five point, five point two. So five point two strokes for maneuverability. Just a decent score. And I think what hinders this board a little bit is the side fins, that's what helped it with the tracking. So in terms of maneuverability, you do have, if you do choose to keep the side fins on there, it will hinder your maneuverability just a tiny bit, but it's not a huge difference either way. So in terms of the kayak package itself, in terms of the kayak package itself, I do like that the Retrospec Weekender, they do have a little inflatable seat. It definitely helps alleviate some of the pressure off your legs, especially if you have back problems like old me, or you have tight hips or something like that. The alleviated seat also kind of helps you kind of put your feet in different positions. You can do like that. I usually kind of like to bend them like this. I do wish the board had maybe some sort of foot rest that would allow you to rest your feet against them and then... Now, I think from my overall perspective, if I could only, if, could, if I could find one problem with the kayak formation kit, it'd probably be, the main thing is the paddle and that this thing is sort of in the way of where I grip my paddle whenever I'm kayaking. I kind of like to have a bit of a wider grip. Um, that doesn't mean that will apply to you though. If you have, I have a pretty decent sized arm span, so 
If you have a bit of a smaller arm span, that's no problem. You can have a little bit of like a closer grip, sort of like this. I usually like to have, you know, about here or so. But no, overall for the price, it's I do like the kayak formation. So my overall casual paddling impressions and paddleboard formation. Well, we'll go to a little area cool. That's also kind of cool. It's a little bit shallow here, so you can kind of see. Well, maybe you guys can. I don't know. Uh, the bottom of the lake here because it's semi shallow here. The impressions are this is a nice little board to cruise on. Like I'm having a very nice little enjoyable time just kind of cruising on the board. It seems like it's a very easy board to learn. It's a very good board for maneuverability, for tracking. This is just a very user friendly board. And when I bounced on it, actually, it it felt semi-stable. Or I should say, it felt somewhat rigid. Now, this isn't going to be the most rigid board in the world. Um, this is... It's not the cheap... It's not, it's not necessarily a cheap board, per se, but it is... It's not going to be made with the same qualities as, like, paddleboard that's, you know, $1,000 or something like that. But you know what, for a beginner, you don't need that kind of board, you know? If you just want to figure out if paddle boarding is for you and you just want something that won't break the bank, you know? This is a good board. I do like the Retrospect Weekender. Another thing I do like about this specific brand compared to other quote unquote uh, Amazon style brands is the fact that this board has actually been around the Retrospec Weekender brand has been around for quite a while. Like at least from when I've followed them, at least five, six years, probably more, probably 10 or something. I'll have to look at the company history, but anyway, this board is just, so the people sort of know what they're doing. It's not just some random people that are drop shipping paddle boards and don't know the first thing about anything. These guys have been in business for a while, so they, have a chance to kind of understand the board and make improvements. And I can tell you, there would definitely be improvements between this board versus the Weekender that is like five years old, I guarantee you. Just even with the accessories, like there's a paddle, here I'll show you, a little paddle holder here. There's a little easy link system for your seat. So, all kinds of cool stuff. So what are my overall impressions of the Retrospec Weekender Plus Kayak Hybrid Edition. I actually like this board. I thoroughly enjoyed it as an all around cruising board. The kayak kit was actually fairly comfortable too. If I was Retrospec Weekender, I would have a little, some sort of little foot pad right about here just to kind of give your, your foot a little bit of a rest so you can engage a little bit more of your core. But I felt comfortable paddling it. I do appreciate the inflatable seat that it comes with. It is nice to kind of sit elevated when you're paddling this board. So that's a nice little thing. I do like the deck pad as well. The deck pad is actually fairly grippy. Um, yeah, for stability, I think, especially for beginners, this is a fantastic pick. And I mean, even the people that are kind of on the fence about actually standing all their paddle boarding, the kayak conversion seat allows you to just sit because there's a lot of people, you know, they don't really want to fall into the water, etc. which I guess is understandable. Heck, I, most times, I don't really want to fall in the water either, but it's a nice board to even just clip that kayak seat on and just use it as a kayak, essentially. The side fins definitely help the board track better, especially for the shape of it. It is a wider board. You're not gonna win any races with it, but the board tracks well and maneuvers well. So it has, both scores are actually very impressive with this. And so, if I, if I was to 
say how I feel now versus how I first got it, I'd say it's actually exceeded my expectations. Uh, tracks well, maneuvers well, definitely stable stand on. And yeah, I had a overall very enjoyable time paddling this board. Now, is this something that I would buy if I was like an intermediate to advanced paddler? Not necessarily, unless you just want to use the kayak kit. It's not a speedy board. I wouldn't recommend this for like paddling against the tide. For example, the Nicomaco River, that's right near my place. I wouldn't necessarily use this board for that because I know it would be a little bit slower just due to the shape and the drag of the nose. But for people who just want to cruise, paddle around, sort of enjoy life on the lake, this is a solid board. Thanks for watching my on-water review. I'm Derek from Inflatable Sub Authority. And if you wanna see more information on this board or you wanna buy this board, there's a link right in the description. And the review link will be in there as well. Till then, see you later. Ciao. Just wanted to show what the Retrospec Weekender package comes with. Just so you can see kind of firsthand how the board looks, etc. So you can see this is the aluminum paddle right here. And then there's the kayak blade. This is the kayak seat. So that straps right into the little easy link systems over right over there. So there's two, so you put the bottom one over there, the other one right there. Comes with a leash. You can see there's the back bungee deck webbings. 